Welcome back to my 2017 winter series on six simple and two not quite as simple flies that I catch most of my trout on. I'm Raj Kletke and today we'll be tying, discussing, and fishing the zebra midge. There are many species of midges and they come in multiple colors and sizes, but most common midges are similar to these and the zebra midge is an impressionistic representation of the midge pupa. I consider the zebra midge one of the most important, if not the most important, fly in my fly box for difficult situations and the way I like to fish. It's easy to tie and extremely effective. But before we tie one, let me digress one moment. Becoming a better fisherman and catching more and larger fish is not a smooth, linear learning process. It tends to come in small and large steps. Like many, I started as a dry fly fisherman because it's fun and, at least at the beginner level, is the easiest fly fishing to do. But there were many times when I couldn't catch trout. Some of the major steps that help me become a better fly fisherman and decrease the fishless hours are listed. Many fly fishermen have followed similar steps. And, of course, improving my casting and mending techniques continue to contribute to my improvement. But the latest significant step in decreasing the fishless hours and helping me catch more and larger fish has been learning to fish the zebra midge. Yes, I think it's that good. Of course, the real step was learning to fish midges, but fishing the zebra midge started my midge fishing and is still the most common midge pattern I use. So, why is midge fishing that good? Well, here's a brief summary, but to learn more about midges and how important they are, please review the sections on midges in my two series on simple entomology for the fly tire and fly fisherman and fly fishing hatches, which are on my channel. So, let's tie the zebra midge. Here, I've already placed a bead on an emerger hook. Use either a standard size bead for the hook or go slightly larger. Many use super glue to hold the bead in place. I usually stick the end of the ribbing wire into the bead to help hold the bead in place. Keep the wire on the near side of the hook and hold the ribbing wire at a slight angle as you wind your thread. Then it'll lay down in a nice smooth layer. Take the wire about one-third to one-half of the way around the bend. Then bring your thread forward to the bead and put in some extra wraps. These extra wraps will unwind as you reverse wind the rib. This saves time because you don't need the bobbin cradle. Reverse wind the rib, trying to get fairly even spacing, although this is more for your aesthetics than for the trout. I like fairly prominent ribbing, so I usually use a small, not extra small, wire on my zebra midge. I often add an extra turn or two of ribbing directly behind the bead, again to help hold the bead in place. Tie off the ribbing behind the bead and break the ribbing off or use your old scissors to cut it. Don't cut wire with your good scissors. At this point you could just add some more thread wraps and finish the fly, but I usually dampen the thread. and add a very small amount of dubbing directly behind the bead. And then I'll whip finish it twice. I usually whip finish twice so I don't have to use head cement. and then cut the thread off. The classic zebra midge has a 
normal to slightly oversized bead, black thread, silver wire for ribbing, and a small amount of black dubbing behind the bead. There are many variations for the midge pupa. Most go by different names, in other words, not called zebra midges, but all are very simple flies and very similar to the zebra midge. Some are tied specifically for near surface use. Common variations are listed, but starting out, keep it very simple. Just tie some size 20 black zebra midges with brass beads and silver ribbing. I only rarely find a need for other variations. If you're already a midge fisherman, you already have a zebra midge or your favorite midge pupa pattern and don't need to be convinced about how effective they are. But if you're new to midge fishing, I may need to convince you that many and large fish will take such a small fly. Until you're convinced, you won't fish the zebra midge with the confidence needed to fish it well. So, if you're new to midge fishing, continue fishing with your favorite flies, but add the zebra midge as a dropper when appropriate. If you're searching relatively quiet waters with a dry fly, tie the zebra midge on the bend of your dry fly with about 20 or more inches of 5 to 6x tippet. Usually use one size thinner than what you're using on your point fly. If you're searching with your favorite nymph, try the zebra midge as a dropper to the bend of your nymph with about 12 to 15 inches of tippet. We'll fine tune both of these a little bit later. For now, I just want you to fish normally and find out how effective the zebra midge can be. I feel certain that on some days, in some conditions, on some water types, the zebra midge will outfish your favorite fly. Note the water type and conditions when this occurs, and you'll be well on your way to learning when and how to fish midges. Now that you're convinced, or at least I hope you're convinced, let's get serious about using the zebra midge. I still use the zebra midge as a dropper frequently off my favorite point dryer nymph. I also use it even in tandem with another midge pattern. Sometimes I'll fish it as a single fly if I feel its drift is being disturbed by currents affecting the larger point fly. I fish the zebra midge any time of the year when I don't have a reason to be fishing a different organism, and certainly after other patterns have failed. This is especially true on relatively quiet water and especially on rivers or streams with known prolific midge hatches. But basically, I consider all trout streams and rivers to have midges. I will even fish it through riffles rather than changing flies, especially if I'm using it as a dropper. Sometimes I get a little too lazy to change flies, even though I know I should in this situation. I try to fish at dead drift, but a little, emphasize very little, movement doesn't seem to hurt and may occasionally even seem to help. Commonly, I use an indicator when I fish the zebra midge near the bottom attached to a heavy nymph. I may even add split shot if needed to get to the bottom. In other words, classic indicator nymph fishing. But unlike most caddis larvae or non-hatching mayfly nymphs that tend to drift predominantly near the bottom, midges in the drift may also be throughout the water column. So, especially if I see a few scattered rising fish, I do fish the zebra midge at all depths by varying the length of tippet for my dropper. I commonly use an elk hair caddis as my indicator fly when fishing this way. Trout more commonly look up than down during active drift feeding. I take off the zebra midge when a better option, such as a hatch occurs, when I'm fishing fast water for a while, or when it's just not working for me. Usually I'll give flies 20 to 30 minutes through appropriate water before I decide that they're not working for me. But deciding what to use next after my zebra midge is often a problem because the zebra midge is commonly my go-to fly. I may have to just sit and rest, have lunch for a while, or streamer fish. 
We've been fishing the zebra midge as a midge pupa below the surface. There may have been occasional rising fish, but not an obvious hatch. During an obvious midge hatch, the beadhead zebra midge may still work, as trout initially do take midge pupa as the pupa slowly rise to the surface. But if the zebra midge stops working, it's time to change. First, be sure it is a midge hatch. See my series on fly fishing hatches for more in-depth discussion, but if you don't see a definite organism, at least check to make sure that it's not a mayfly spinner that's on quiet water and consider a possible caddis hatch if it's on fast water. During a midge hatch, the midge pupa become concentrated just below, in, or on the surface as they emerge. Trout will usually turn their attention to this area of greater concentration. So, if you're comfortable that it is a midge hatch, there may be a better choice than the beadhead or weighted zebra midge. So, join me next time for another simple tie that I like to fish during a midge hatch. I'm Raj Kletke, and I'll see you soon.